Hello guys, this is Viria and today there's gonna be a video that is kind of different than usually uh, because someone on YouTube actually suggested to make a video on the style development and uh, generally how to develop an art style and how I developed mine so that's what I'm gonna talk about today I started drawing around a year of 2015, 2016 maybe, or somewhere around those lines, I think. <laughs> and uh, when I started, I started drawing just because I saw the art of Birch, or Birch, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, uh, but I saw the art of Bridget and I fell in love with it. It was in one of those Russian uh, fan bases, like... <laughs> And I saw it and I just fell in love entirely and I wanted to draw and I start, started it, you know, uh, just like that because I was so pumped with this art, art style. And uh, you really, <laughs> what's one of my favorite pieces, I don't really know what's there, but you can really see the, like, influence. <laughs> Of Bridget's works on mine because basically back when I started I didn't really know any art etiquette or this kind of stuff and I thought that it was completely okay you know I was just drawing at that point and I didn't really give that much thought to it so I started I I don't know I didn't really initially try like copying that I guess I did but I didn't really think I was <laughs> I didn't really know there was such a thing. Uh, at first I just started not redrawing, but kind of trying to mimic the works of hers. And then I found the tutorials that she did uh, on DeviantArt or somewhere around those lines. And I understood and found out that there are some things like circles and guidelines and you can actually build a body. Because before that I was just, you know, sketching from my mind without giving it any thought at all but then I did found out about those guidelines from Bridget and I started to do that as well uh, here you can see like how <laughs> big the influence actually was it's not the same art not the exact same I guess but the influence is huge and I was drawing like that for a while and uh, I actually didn't really at first I did want to draw like that, just because I wanted to draw in general and I couldn't do it any other way. But then later I really wanted to make something unique out of it, because I started getting comments like, hey, your art looks like rigid. Uh, and it, it's not something that I liked. I couldn't really draw any other way but this back then, but I started to try to branch off from it, like, and to make it not as not as influenced, you know, You're, you can kind of see the difference because Bridget's art was way top-notch back then, especially comparing to me very very starting out and my an anatomy just not there, not existent, and there are so many mistakes in there in general. Um, but I really wanted to start branching off from this, uh, for, for from those similarities, you know, even though at some point it wasn't actually all that similar, like you didn't really confuse the two too much, because mine was kind of low quality and all, but I still wanted to develop from that. I remember this piece with <laughs> James and Sirius, and I remember being just so proud of it, you know, because there's this cloak that's kind of invisible and it shows like invisible, but now I'm looking at it and it's not great, it's kind of <laughs> okay when you start, but now it's just uh, child's work. Then I thought that, hey, to branch off from, like, to do a difference between my work and Bridget's and to be some something more like myself, I started drawing on the computer. And at first I started drew doing that with a mouse. And uh, I think I was using, like, open canvas or some sort of thing. Um, I found out it from some artists on DeviantArt that I don't really remember the name of anymore. 
uh, but they drew a lot of murders back then, a lot of James and Sirius and Remus and just all that, and they drew an open canvas, and I thought that, hey, I can do that too. And I, <laughs> this is a piece that was one of the very first ones that I did with a mouse. Um, I'm sorry, my computer is very lagging, there are so many <laughs> open uh, files, that it's just very hard. Um, Oh, here is one of the second, like, not maybe, not the second, but one of the first ones I did with the mouse as well. And you can see the lines are kind of <laughs> not so great. So I was drawing just with the mouse and I kind of liked it, but it was way too troublesome. And uh, I ended up finding out about this thing called, well, drawing tablets, and that you can actually draw on the tablet and like with a mouse not with a mouse but with a pen and it's like a whole new level of drawing so this drawing of series is actually one of the very first ones that I did <laughs> back then uh, and at that point I was starting to you know just trying to figure out how to well how to digital digital art basically and I started drawing more and more I think it, this one was actually drawn with a mouse as well I'm not too sure, maybe it was with a pen already, but who knows, I don't remember anymore. But I was proud of it at some point. And um, I started to figure out how to draw digital, basically. I started finding out about the program and about layers and about that kind of stuff. But it's still not great, because I didn't find out a lot at this point, clearly. Um, here is also some... A recent, not not recent, but one of the first ones that I did with a tablet, I think. Uh, also murders, you can see them. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure whether it's drawn by a tablet or with a mouse, because uh, it kind of looks either way wonky, you know, because I was just starting out. But I didn't really have that much of a problem to actually switching from pencils to a digital pen and I wasn't that uncomfortable drawing it, but the quality of work wasn't great, just in general, because I was still starting out. And this piece, I also remember being very, very proud of it. I was like, oh, those hair is super shiny, and I actually really loved drawing hair super shiny back then. Here is also one of the first pieces with digital. Here I started to kind of try to develop it, but I still didn't really know much about layers and layer settings and like you can make something glow or generally all of those things so it's kind of noobish oh here's also one of the first ones drawing on tablets that i actually really liked because it was so you know detailed in a way more detailed than i could make it <laughs> back then and here's also one of the first ones this is when i started to kind of figure it out maybe a little bit and here see everything was just super shiny like the hair the hands i was just <laughs> very shiny here i was very proud of this one as well now i don't really like it at all because there are so many mistakes in general but uh, back then i was proud of it uh, yeah, I'm sorry there is so much stuff. Oh, here there started the stage of me wanting to branch off, branch off from the works of Bridget because I still, for a very long period, I still felt like it looked so much like uh, the works of Birch because I got, I, deep down I couldn't um, feel that I did a good job on branching off from that. Even though I tried really my best and I was doing everything I could, but it's still not something that you can just switch, you know. We all start with copying uh, to some extent, because when you start you really don't know all the etiquette or the kind of stuff, and you just, you just, add, you just draw. Uh, but then later you, for the majority of time, want to develop something own and unique. and. Um, you need to find different artists and different inspirations uh, to say you uh, don't just look at the works of one artist and then try to mimic everything they do uh, and transfer it into your own, 
works but you try to kind of mix it all together like you i will talk later about that about everyone who inspired me in one way or another and uh, how it all combines uh, into mine mine works i guess uh, but this is the stage of me just drawing a lot from references and such uh, you can see there's like everything is drawn from the reference because <laughs> I, I don't know, I couldn't really draw good anatomy back then and now I was drawing a lot of, from different photos and stuff this is clearly not from a photo and this is not great and the colors are just <laughs> scary but here is just me trying out a lot of different things I tried like line art style and then I also used to draw in a more painting like style for a while like with no line art and now I can I'm not sure I can do that oh here is a stage that started I was starting once I got into digital I started looking up for a lot of diff different digital artists and I got very very inspired by the artist named Andre Hilde oh wait a second my mouse driver just <laughs> broke sorry and I'm back I'm sorry for the inconvenience but my mouse driver just some sometimes just purr and it's gone Basically, the artist was named Andre Hilda on DeviantArt and I was inspired by their work a whole lot. I couldn't really <laughs> grasp that level yet, but I started to incorporate a lot of dark um, black elements into my works and I generally really loved the works. It was so intimate, intimate in a way and I wanted to do that as well. I remember having this one on my uh, lock screen for a while this is one that you also kind of see the influence it's not like too too much you can tell the difference between them but still I was inspired by the work a lot and here the colors I used back then were were not too similar but they were also kind of darkish and under Hilda generally had a very dark palette uh, and so mine were kind of dark as well and sometimes just a mess basically at that point my art was very all over the top all over the place that's the word see like the textures I used so lots of black things obviously it wasn't to that extent this one was drawn from reference as well and I remember really really loving this one mm. so also me just trying out some things Mm, see lots still lots of <laughs> inspiration generally you cannot get inspired by one artist and then by the other and then you combine those things together and because you aren't really that skilled yet this the way you copy end up being not entirely a copy and it ends up being kind of a mix of all those things together and it ends up looking similar but kind of different at the same time um, here is also clearly inspired the snow and all I think it's basically the same texture on this one I remember just being very inspired by this piece because I still love it even now that I look at it I used to draw a lot of chili with the snow I did try to do more colorful ones not so muted and grayish but it's not like hey still not perfect and still all over the place basically so no there is no such thing as style there i think uh it might be kind of a little bit all messy in a way then i don't really remember the sketches all that well but then i remember that I met the artist Andals on Tumblr, I think it was already the Tumblr days, and they did so much Tanglet art, and it was around the time Tanglet actually came out, and I was so inspired by the movie, and then by the work of Andals, I started drawing a lot of Tangles as well, not only Tangles, but 
a lot of tangles. And this is a piece, like, see, uh, there is this uh, very pale line art uh, of handles, and I thought that, hey, I can actually do a pale line art as well. And I did that, and uh, this is also drawn from a reference, and I think I did the pale line art, and then I thought that, hey, I can do a texture, because I didn't really like much the way it ended up turning out. Uh, as I colored it, so I added a te texture on top of it and it uh, started looking like wow, so good! Like, comparing to my previous works, I really liked the way it looked and that it kind of had a, a tint to it, so, so to say. So I started incorporating the texture to my works uh, a lot, like, there's texture everywhere and also a lot of inspiration because I really really love the style of handles and tanglet as well and the themes of handles so I started mainly mimicking that a little bit I didn't try to like steal a style but I did inspired by the themes a lot and see this is the stage where I thought that I'm kind of starting out a little bit to uh, get something like a style because a lot of my works were um, under the texture and oh my god this anatomy is just killing me so under the texture and they all ended up having a similar tint to it like they all wear a similar palette and stuff this one is not great but it was also very like Andal's work really inspired me back then i drew a lot of princesses and see anastasia anastasia a lot of and here I also found out a different texture and I started adding this texture on top of uh, my colors but underneath the line art and it once again ended up being something not Andal's like but similar but different at the same time so all of my works uh, from that period are kind of light in the tones and you can see the inspiration there but it started as a development of some sort so basically all of my colors were uh, kind of pale because I added a texture on top of pretty much every single drawing so all, all of the colors are very pale and this has also helped to kind of do a style thing I was also very inspired by the mermaids of handles so I did that as well and I think at some point I actually drew the, this exact mermaids with crediting of course uh, see? see? textures with this texture uh, it kind of started being a little bit more recognizable, even though the anatomy and everything is still not great. But basically, it was oh, this one is like heavily inspired. I remember I don't really found it, couldn't find the piece uh, anymore. But there was one with Luna with very detailed hair, and I fell in love with it. And I thought that hey, I can do that too, or something like this. So this is a way to mimic. And after this one, after I did a lot of hatching, I thought that hey, I can incorporate hatching into my other works because I think back then I didn't really do that much, like it was just lines and no hatching at all. And after it, it's like hey, hatching, boss hatching, the pale Leonard, also the noses I drew clearly very similar, or I tried to draw <laughs> very similar noses to Andal's. Uh, so at this stage, it was. Com it combines pale colors, texture, pale line arts, and hatching. See, also hatching, but not quite in those places that I do them at the do hatching at the moment. But I still love this piece because I drew it from reference and actually ended up being very um, decent. See, everyone is leaning on the left, but it's once again also pale line arts and texture on top. Here I don't really know who inspired it too too much but I watched the movie Penelope and I always loot you from that. Uh, same thing. Don't really I still think I was inspired by Andals because oh see clearly very Andals like I also incorporated the way into it into the way I drew faces like big eyes, small noses and it's kinda both inspired by Disney and by style of Andals. Some works are kind of not... Uh, basically, every single work that I draw from the reference ends up being a different style that I draw f not from the reference, because I couldn't really <clears throat> get to this level yet. 
but I tried. So once again, everything is very pale and that's kind of what combines uh, it all together. And this is, I think, when it started to look more like a style. Um, um, yeah, so this is a style when I did some kind of uh, backgroundish, but still the line art is there and it's pale and the texture is there. Sometimes I and changed those textures and stuff, but it's still very pale general generally. Oh, what's next? Then there's stage of Cora. <laughs> Basically, Cora came out and um, it inspired me a whole lot. And that stage, I didn't really have too much time to draw for some reason, or I didn't have any willing to. Uh, what to finish my pieces so there were a lot of works with just one tone and uh, I tried to draw kind of similar to the style of Cora. see there is pretty much everything either with hatching oh here I finished a piece what a surprise see here the line art kind of turned into from I think I started adding like a multiply um, to the line art so it kind of darkish more dark than it was before here i started using marker tool for, co for coloring because hatching was just uh, way too long actually i think those more um, more woods one colored pieces uh, is something that i inspired from minuiko on tumblr uh, they also used to sometimes draw a lot of like more one colored things but not, not the same, but generally kind of similar in the fact that there are no colors. So here's the whole avatar stage, both with a very one tones, uh, grayscale, and the ones with my general styles. It's pretty much the same style, but uh, I no longer used uh, the texture as harsh as I used it at first. So the colors are kind of lightish, but not too, too light like it was before. Here, more of those one toned ones. I drew like that for a while. Here, I think I got inspired by uh, Alice Inkset um, and the way that uh, Alex kind of just did a lot of a lot of uh, what are those strokes of different colors, and I try to not to mimic but to try painting this kind of way and this is the first piece that is a little bit of my this is where my current style for painting started basically there is more of murders and more of kind of painting stuff see this is not so much actually changed from this stage to how i do it now but then i used to do Okay, line arts, multiplies, and then color, and then add shading. And now I do it different. What what I do different is shading at this point. But I will, this is also flat coloring, and uh, the line art is pale. Actually, it is different. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is also the stage that I think kind of showed the style. And here's the second attempt to do the glass-like style with a lot of um, different colors. And it's also was inspired the way I do my paintings in the moment. And this is oh here's next stage is Homestuck. <laughs> During reading Homestuck, I read a lot of a lot of it, and all my works I try to incorporate the um, the style of Homestuck and the pixelated kind of colors where there is no. Um, painting and just strokes and generally very bright colors because homestuck so and it also turned it into a lineless style i got very inspired by kind of lineless by papers everywhere they were super popular in homestuck fandom and i loved their art so so much like it was so top notch i, I still love it a lot so yeah, basically I cannot try to do that, but back then a lot of people actually did like those simple colors, uh, no line art pieces for Homestuck, so I tried to do that too. 
but I'm not really all too great without the lines, so... Uh, here's more like a mix of those and more pixelated one. It's not pixelated, it's just like... Uh, basically no line arts and very, very flat colors. This is also basically not that much changed from that stage. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> I get kind of lost. This video is gonna be very long, I'm very sorry. Oh, here is a stage of Percy Jackson, and I still colored it the way I did before without the texture, but with the pale lines and with shading on top. It is the coloring that actually lasts me for a while. Then, this was the first, I think, one of the first pieces that I ended up adding some. Uh, what is this? Lightening layer, just so everything lights up. And I also added some. It's like very gray layer you add on top, and you either overlay, overlay it, or do something else. I don't really remember the setting of the layer at this point, but I also used that one color for every layer that gave each of my <laughs> pieces like this kind of look. This is also me getting very inspired by the warps of papers everywhere. It doesn't really look this way, but I still remember being very inspired by it. And by this, and here you can see I added the same layer on top. Basically, it's like on top of everything, pretty much. And on top of this, I don't really remember the setting, I'm sorry. So this is a stage that was there. <clears throat> then... what is this? Then there is a stage of Haiku. Uh, this is one of the first drawings for Haiku, which is kind of the same style. But I didn't really have any uh, desire to... Like, to still do the shading the way I used to do it. So sometimes I just added it on top, but mostly it was... Um, being very proud of those pieces. Mostly after this piece it was very flat coloring and line art and uh, minimal shading. See you can see me shading just underneath the, the head on the neck and that kind of stuff but pretty much it's all kind of flat shading. And here's also flat shading and line art and that's it basically nothing else. Here I got inspired. I oh jeez, I forgot to actually download the piece uh, from Galaxy Speaking. I think that's the title. And they drew like uh, pretty such pretty scrolls, and it was such pretty lighting. And I tried to incorporate the lighting and the way they did lighting as well into the pieces. So I had a lot of works with like a lot of lighting afterwards. Here as well my haiku stage, <laughs> which was a lot, which is pretty much a similar way of uh, drawing, just I added some multiply layer on top to shade. And sometimes I, you can see I changed the line color, and it's the stage where I actually, whenever the sun hits, I drew like those very white lines. Here I also had a lot of... Uh, stage of just coloring these two colors, you know, red and blue, red and blue, um, also red and blue, a lot of uh, d darkish brown and some sort of it. Here's basically the same thing with multiply layer on top. Don't really remember who inspired me. In that. Oh, at this stage, I was very inspired with why Shonen King. And I really loved the way they did anatomy and there was so much diversity in their pieces and I wanted to try to uh, push my diversity a little bit better as well and like to try different body shapes so I created this team of the girls to practice body shapes and basically I tried to do something a little bit different. That's also flat coloring and um, pretty much that thing. This is very durable and Akashi and I loved the way the lines looked uh, so my lines for this one started being black and the colors is just um, there's some color with this I started tr 
I still did my pale line art thing, but then after a while, I don't really remember after how much time, but I remember loving so much the way my like gray grayish pieces looked. Uh, they were they seemed to be way more expressive than they are the ones with the pale liner and eventually at this one I switched it to the dark ones because I feel felt after this one like I was lacking a lot of uh, emotions because the lines were so you know so pale generally so I switched my lines to black ones well, not like black black but black uh, bluish black let's say so after that this is a stage of well just of dark lines and some overlay layers on top basically i added a single overlay layer on top of each one just so it has a hue here i started trying not trying but i did like pale line art again but not as pale as it was before and i did a shading like an overlay layer is a shading because that's what i started to do and this is the piece inspired by 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 kani karakel uh, by this ray i saw that there is a line hitting the sun hitting from one side and then there is bluish light hitting from the other side and i wanted to do that as well to two double sources and it ended up being in, not like it ended up layering on top of my current style at that point and it ended up being different and that's actually how i do this on my coloring up to this point i really loved um that one so i tried drawing something like this again with two lines of light sources with bluish one and with a warmish one and this one i think is with the pink one but it's still the same thing see once again two li light light sources i'm sorry i can't really pronounce it and after this i started really um, developing this kind of coloring more and more and more and because i felt back then that this is a type of coloring that I actually want to stay um, stay with uh, in my further journey. I started uh, painting on top of everything to add more variation of colors to the hair and to the um, shirt and basically everywhere. And back then I also, sometimes I still do that, I used to do that blue overlay layer on top of those further parts of the body or the background just so this uh, this one is more clear and this one is kind of less clear and after this i started to do that more and more and more and basically i started doing it in every single piece and this is the same thing with me painting over um, over the bodies over the line art over everything this is where it started to get some kind of development. I still stick to uh, some flat, more flat coloring types when I haven't had the time to finish. Here I remember this piece was also a kind of changing moment for my coloring because I did do this and then I uh, added to my luminosity and to my saturation and it ended up being so pale but so saturated at the same time which is something that I also really liked and I remember adding the uh, very blue lighting layer on top of this one and that's also how I do it up to this point this is the time when I started to actually figure out how I want to color and how I want to stay how I want my coloring to stay so I think this is a time when my style started getting more recognizable this is my style for painting and this is how it started remember those ones that i show shown before so this is pretty much the same technique but just a little bit more advanced and currently i hope it's even more advanced because i polished it up a lot see this is the same type of coloring and this is the thing i was talking about that i ate added some overlay layers or just layers with uh, background color just so there's uh, one leg on the front and some part of it uh, like 
filter in the image so at that stage I did it a lot here is me also trying out with the style and with more and more painting on top of pictures and that's how I do it at the moment basically afterwards I just started to figure out more and more this is when I started to figure out like I think when this when I pushed a little bit my painting style and this is my current works from the ones that I actually very proud of and also this one and here 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 up to my very recent ones you can see that after a while my line art uh, changed f from light to well to darkish blue and um, the flat coloring stayed, the faces kinda changed from the initial ones and uh, the overlay layers added and that's what I do every single time even though sometimes it's more noticeable and sometimes it's less noticeable and this is my very recent drawing and this is <laughs> one of my first ones Ta-da! The development! <laughs> and like, uh, how much years is this? It's probably, I think, around 8 years at this point. Maybe it's somewhere around those lines. This is where we started and this is where we ended. And it's still not the end, it's still how it's gonna... Um, so it's still gonna develop a lot uh, in the coming years. Basically, my advice for creating an art style to Try to not get stuck into admiring one artist, because it's really, um, how to say, uh, it's not too great when you're just a pale copy of someone else. And um, mostly we, as an artist, as artists, want to be somewhere, uh, someone very unique and someone people can. Uh, admire in a way and just uh, generally be someone who can inspire people and with that you really have to focus on uh, finding more amazing artists and getting more and more inspired with by everyone and combining all those things you like about each style and uh, getting completely your own even when you try to mimic something someone else do you can actually get uh, something completely unique like <laughs> I did when I tried to, uh, not to, to when I was inspired by Kami's work uh, with two light sources it ended up being kind of a <laughs> very mind thing I think and uh, yeah that's how you roll so basically the more people you admire the more you uh, get inspired by them the more details you can uh, interpret into your own works and uh, really stay more uh, positive about developing an art style it's gen definitely not a thing that comes uh, like very fast in a day it's not a thing that you do in even a few years it's just a thing that you work on constantly over and over and uh, you end up getting something completely unique in the end it's not even the end you still develop more and more you know <laughs> but it usually takes a while to develop so don't get discouraged if you can't really figure it out straight away but also try to not uh, focus on one artist's work for too much um, I have people who actually uh, send me images from other artists and they actually say that hey I thought it was your own your work you know this is when it kind of gets a little bit bad because uh, you get so similar to someone else that people actually confuse the works together and that's when i think that you need to take a step back and actually try do something differently a little bit of course it's not uh, a very fast process in general what else really don't get discouraged if it doesn't work out right away um, it's a very long journey and uh, we as artists don't really get very 
how to say this, very pleased with our work, no matter how much we work and uh, just how much we develop, there is still uh, people who draw better than us and there are still some destinations you need to achieve. So just keep drawing, keep doing what you love and keep developing more and more, admiring different people, looking up tutorials online and uh, sometimes even doing art universities, you know, for those who can approach art in a more professional way. Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry this is so long, but I hope it kind of can help you a little bit. So thank you so much for watching. Hope it was a little bit helpful. Helpful. The video is hella long, so I'm very sorry for that. Just keep doing what you do. Don't get discouraged. You will be able to do this in the end, and you will be great, and everything will work out beautifully. So keep on approaching your dreams. I hope this will work out for you as best as possible and as fast as possible. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry it was hella long i couldn't make it any shorter i guess <laughs> so yeah thank you so much and bye